Model SX404 has been designed for rapid one-person assembly and application. The splint can be assembled and applied in under two and a half minutes. To assemble the splint, simply unfold and secure into place. The splint's unique semi-attached design ensures that no major parts will be lost or incorrectly assembled. Step one, remove and unfold the outer shaft assembly. Step two, remove, unfold and lock the inner shaft assembly. Step three, insert inner shaft assembly into the outer shaft assembly. The splint is now ready to apply. Position the Sager SX404 between the patient's legs resting the ischial perineal cushion or saddle against the ischial tuberosity with the shortest end of the articulating base towards the ground. In the case of a unilateral fracture, the splint should be placed in the perineum on the side of the injury. In bilateral fractures, excluding pelvic trauma, the side with the greatest degree of injury should be the side of placement. Apply the abductor bridle or thigh strap around the upper thigh of the fractured limb. Push the ischial perineal cushion gently down while at the same time pulling the thigh strap laterally under the patient's thigh. This will seat the lower end of the cushion comfortably against the ischial tuberosity. Tighten the thigh strap lightly. Lift the spring clip to extend the inner shaft on the SX404 until the crossbar rests adjacent to the patient's heels. Note the absence or presence of distal pulses. Check for sensation. Position the malleolar harness or ankle harness beneath the heels and just above the ankles. Fold down the number of comfort cushions needed to engage the ankle above the medial and lateral malleoli. Using the attached hook and loop straps, wrap the ankle harness around the ankle to secure snugly. Pull the control tabs to engage the ankle harness tightly against the crossbar. Apply quantifiable dynamic traction. Grasp the padded shaft of the SX404 with one hand and the red traction handle with the other. Then, gently extend the inner shaft until the desired amount of traction is recorded on the traction scale. It is suggested to use 10% of the patient's body weight per fractured femur, up to 7 kilograms or 15 pounds for each leg. If bilateral fractures are present, the maximum amount should be 14 kilograms or 30 pounds. At the hollow of the knees, gently slide the large elastic leg cravat through and upwards to the thigh. Leave it lying flat. Again, gently slide the smallest cravat under the hollow of the knee and seesaw it downward to the calves. Lay it flat. Finally, take the remaining cravat and insert it under the hollow of the knees. Lay it flat. As with any device that uses hook and loop fasteners, the cravats may engage on carpet unless care is taken during application. When you insert the cravats under the knee, the hook half of the Velcro fastener faces up on the end of the cravat being inserted. The loop half of the Velcro fastener, therefore, will trail and face down and will not stick to the carpet. Adjust the abductor bridle or thigh strap at the upper thigh, making sure that it is not too tight, but snug and secure. Make sure that it does not impair circulation. Next, firmly secure the elastic leg cravats. Apply the pedal pinion or figure eight strap around the feet to prevent rotation. Note the absence or presence of distal pulses and check for sensation. Record the amount of traction applied and the presence of pulses. The patient is now ready for transport. The SX404 Sager Extreme comes complete with all accessories required for use. The ischial perineal cushion or saddle, the abductor bridle or thigh strap, the carry case, the splint proper, the leg cravat kit, which features four separate lengths, the pedal pinion or figure eight strap, the malleolar harness set or ankle harness set, 